Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about connective tissues. And you should remember that there are four types of tissue in the human body. We have epithelial tissues, connective tissues, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. And you should have already watched the video on epithelial tissues and know that they cover and line the inside and the outside of the body. Today we're going to be talking about connective tissue, and connective tissue's main function is to connect and support various parts of the body to one another. Now connective tissue is really very different than epithelial tissue, and the types of connective tissue are very diverse. The one thing you can say about connective tissue is that it is characterized by having living cells in a non-living matrix. Well, what does that mean? Let's go back to epithelial tissues for a minute. Remember this picture, this is a simple columnar epithelium. You can see you have one layer of cells and they are tall and thin sitting on top of a basement membrane. And the cells sit all next to one another, all lined up like little soldiers. Connective tissue isn't like that at all. If you look at this picture, you can see that the connective tissue is quite different. You have a cell over here, couple cells down there, here's a, a white blood cell, here's a stem cell, and they're not all smushed up next to each other. They don't form a sheet that's going to cover anything like epithelial cells do. So you have living cells that are in an area and they're in what we call a non-living matrix. And the matrix is made up of protein fibers and ground substance that's going to fill in the spaces in between these fibers. So we have our living cells in a non-living matrix. Let's talk a little bit more about what these protein fibers are. There's three kinds. The first one shown here in pink are the collagen fibers. And these are very strong and flexible fibers. Our next one are called reticular fibers. They're very thin and branched and they form kind of a mesh network inside the matrix. And our last kind are elastic fibers. And you can see those here, they're sort of in between diameters of reticular fibers versus collagen fibers. And these are very stretchy. So when you have connective tissue, you can have varying amounts of each one of these types of fibers, and it's going to give you a different structure and therefore a different function to your connective tissue. A connective tissue that has a lot of collagen fiber is going to be really, really, really strong. A connective tissue that's going to have, that's going to have a lot of elastic fiber is going to be really, really, really stretchy. And reticular fibers are going to be really useful for surrounding things and holding things together because they make this sort of branched network. Remember I said that there's a lot of diversity in connective tissue. There's a lot of different kinds of connective. If you look here, you can see that we can break them into different types. First, we have fibrous connective tissues. There are two different types of fibrous connective tissue, but both of them have a lot of collagen fibers, so they're very strong. We then have supportive connective tissue, and under the supportive connective tissue we have cartilage and bone because they're really quite solid and they help to support the body. Our last category is fluid connective tissue, and this is connective tissue in which the matrix is completely fluid. So let's start out with loose connective tissue. There are three types of loose connective tissue. We have areolar, and you would find it under the skin. We have reticular that supports organs. And we also have adipose tissue, which is fat tissue, and you're gonna find it under your skin as well, well as around the heart and kidneys. You can, you can see in this picture that you have a lot of different types of fibers. You have elastic fibers, you have collagen fibers, you're also going to have some reticular fibers. You can see that it's really quite open, meaning there's a lot of space in between the cells. Here's a cell, and another cell, and another cell. In contrast, dense connective tissue is does not have a lot of open space. There's a lot of collagen fibers in this, which gives it a lot of strength but not as much stretchiness or elasticity to it. And you're going to find these in your tendons and ligaments. And remember, your tendons are going to connect your muscles to your bones, and your ligaments connect one bone to another bone. Dense connective tissue is one of the few types of connective tissue that does not have a very good blood supply. 
And so therefore, if you ever tear a tendon or a ligament, it takes a long time for it to heal just because there's not a lot of new nutrients and blood coming into these tissues. Our next type of connective tissue is cartilage. And there's three main types of cartilage. We have hyaline cartilage, which is smooth. An example of where you would find hyaline cartilage is the tip of the nose or between your articulating bones in your joints. We also have elastic cartilage, which has a lot of elastic fibers in it which is why if you pull your outside of your ear down and let it pop up, it will just flat back into place. We also have fibrocartilage, and you would find that in between the intervertebral discs and in your knees, and its function is to absorb shock. This is a little bit more flexible matrix than bone, but it's still living cells within a non-living matrix. This also has somewhat of a poor blood supply. Bone is also connective tissue and its job is to store salts, mostly calcium, for when the body needs them. Bones have an excellent blood supply which is why you can completely break a bone, put it in a cast, and you're back walking on it again six weeks later. There are a couple of different types of cells that live within bones. Osteoblasts build bone. Osteoclasts break down bone. We also have two types of bone, compact bone and spongy bone. And we'll be learning a little bit more about that when we cover the skeletal system. Our last type of connective tissues are fluid. And these have a completely fluid matrix. So bone has a very rigid and solid matrix, but blood and lymph have liquid matrices. The job of blood is to transport gases and nutrients, as well as to remove waste. Inside blood, we have formed elements. We have white blood cells, which you can see here. We have red blood cells, which are here. And we also have platelets, which are shown right here. White blood cells make up our immune system and protect us. Red blood cells carry gases, specifically oxygen. And platelets are important in clotting in case we have leaking of the blood. The plasma is the other part of the blood. The formed elements are all solid. The plasma is the liquid part. This is the matrix. In the plasma, we have water, we have dissolved gases, we have various nutrients and proteins that are carried along with the blood. The lymph houses the immune system, and it helps to return excess fluid from the tissues back to the circulation. You are responsible for understanding the different types of connective tissue as well as understanding that all connective tissue has the same characteristic of being, of being living cells in a non-living matrix. That's it for today. See you in class.